Hey there everybody, Joe here, good to see you again. We have really studied some different kinds of water. So next is going to be our rough water on a rocky shore. You know, not all waves are the crystal clear, beautiful beach wave that I love to paint. This is something that I also find really inspiring. And I'm just sitting here admiring the, the smallness that I feel when I'm next to this giant ocean just plowing into these rocks. So for this painting, doing this rocky shore, I really want to capture the feel of water blasting against the shoreline, splashing up on rocks, and not do as much of the perfect looking waves, but experiment with how to make the waves look a little more chaotic and powerful. I'm gonna put my sky together first. I like to do an occasional little dunk in the water with my brush. Quick little dunk. Like that really makes the paint flow out. If all I'm trying to do is get color on there. I love that deep kind of not so intense orange that you get in those clouds when they start catching a little bit of what is soon to be sunset light, but, but not quite. We just have that nice vibrant glow to it. Okay, let's put a little bit of sky, that'll be fun. Let's put just a touch of the sky color right in here. Watch this, just junk, hardly anything. But these little dots I've learned are just really fun little accents separating clouds when you're able to just put a little, a little bit of that sky showing through. Right about the time I think I've got skies all figured out, I see something that just boggles my eyes. I'm like, whoa, man. Sky and clouds are amazing. We can get so many crazy shapes and clouds. It's fun to just experiment, see what, see what comes out. I'm gonna put another big dark one up here. Ooh, this is cool. I like, it almost looks like perspective is on this one and it's going out and away from me. That was a total accident and I just love it. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna run with that idea. Boy, it seems like we had clouds just like this right here in Flagstaff, Arizona the other night. We're in our rain season, so when that late sun comes across a, the beginnings of a, of a thunderhead, you know, you'll get, you'll get this kind of a sky. And it's one of my favorite things, just it's one of my very favorite things, looking, at, looking up at those clouds. Notice that everything on the beach here, we're not gonna do any dry beach on a scene like this. Everything's gotta look dark and reflective. So dark colors on my rocks and my reflection color on the edges of all of them. And when you look at these rocks, you can see reflection on all of them. Some of these more orange colored rocks, I see little specks of the sun reflecting on them. I'll use an orange for that. And I see longer strips along the edges of them of my lighter blue reflection where it's facing more toward that sky. Another cool thing to include in this painting, I think, will be that I can see some rocks in the faces of some of these waves. So I'll make sure that I, you know, see how you can just barely see rocks in the faces of those. So I'm gonna make little bits of rocks kind of poking out of the bases of the waves. Like, you know, try to add that sense of motion. It's gonna envelop the, the shoreline. I look at a scene like this and I think about what else could I add? I, I get to paint it, so I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna fantasize a little bit of everything else that it could be. Maybe add some taller, more dramatic cliffs, but the principles are all right here. I can just look at little things. Oh. I mean, I love it so much, I lose my thoughts when it comes. It's like, it's awesome. You know, we've got a lot of reflection on the rocks. So I'm starting with pure black, and just like I did the first time, I'm gonna put that maroon color on there and I'm gonna build a, a slope coming down right here. I'm gonna let that maroon mix with pure black and it's gonna turn into a brown and then add white. I like to see a difference between light and shadow before I get to the white so that I'm, I'm using a shade of brown as a, like a mid-tone. Because of the way paint mixes it, 
has a way of removing the midtone. Uh, and so what we do is we always keep color in between light and shadow. The way I do that is by first mapping out where the light and shadow is. I think that'll look cool if I just throw in a little bit of that, that dark purple wherever I have these dark shadows. Don't need a lot of it, just a little in there will be cool. I can really bring this shoreline down at an angle to make this feel like we're looking down at something coming toward us. And so we got a real big one up in here. Let's put that rock going like this. I want to visualize this scene. We've got our sketch showing these little rocks going out. So I'm just going to follow that. Some of this I might look at it and be like, so I'm just going to leave it like that. If it comes out good enough, you know, you can come out with some cool stuff just by moving quick, just like that sky came together better for me by just not thinking about it. I want to use darker color for all that deep water out there. And that's going to give me a dramatic look when I have brighter reflection of, you know, maybe a reddish colored light, like a, an evening scene similar to this one. I just love the drama. I'm thinking dramatic light, dramatic waves, dramatic rocks. And so, you know, you can see right here how, how good it looks to have dark color on your, your underwater, on the face of those waves when we're doing the more turbulent water. But we have this reflection out here on top. And you know, so I'll strategize that color that I use on top of a very dark underwater color. So I get that dramatic deep look. No bright turquoise or light brown colors on this one. Deep dark water, except where it's in the shallow water. You can distinctly see it. You know, this more beautiful bright kind of turquoise where the light is bouncing off all the foam bubbles that are under the water, making that brighter, greener, bluer color. I'll use that. Look at that wave, just boom. I love that, man. So fun. I'm gonna start right back here where, where I know I'm not putting my big waves. And I'm gonna start putting little waves in there. And this is just a, a simple, speedy technique where I just make these horizontal strokes right across that dark color. And now you can see where I immediately have the effect of waves out there. So it's just a, a real speedy way to get that, that effect. And it relies on having plenty of wet paint on, on the canvas. Let's think about making some, some bigger waves. Here's how you do that. I'm going to imagine that shape real big right here. So let's go up the left edge, so we're going across multiple, multiple waves. Okay, now we're gonna go down the right side. Let's go down the right side, just putting them in the general area that is on the top right side. Now look at that dark shadow of a wave that's left right there. You're gonna use what's left to do the face of the wave because that's where you want just a little bit. That's facing right toward us so we don't see quite as much reflection there. Wherever you want to see it. You know, I'm kind of imagining a wave right here now. Dark wave right there. Let's just go through and put some more edges down. We're going to do a wave in here. Oh, man. So I'm going to get more of my reflection color and start making my shapes. Once that falls just far enough, it starts to roll up under the wave. i got to make sure I use my darker purple colors in order to create that that shadow. When we have these bigger crashes, it's going to be really important to do light and shadow on all of that white water. So, you know, shadow on white water is an awesome effect if you can really get it. So I have to be careful when I'm painting my scene to leave lots of room for my brightest white highlights so that I can actually have shadow on that bright white water. When we look at that, all of that churning foam, you know, we'll see it when another big wave comes in here. You know, we translate that into just pure white. It's just white, but it has light and shadow. Therefore, we have to save our white 
for the lightest stereo. So we have to use something darker than white. Gray, blue, violet is my preference for the shadows on all of that churning white water. So I'll have to be real strategic about my colors here. I need those light colors for the foam. I need the dark, dramatic color for underwater. Here we go. This is going to be a good splash right here. Oh! Man, I love it. And you can see the brighter turquoise as it settles, where that light just bounces out of the water. Foam splitting apart. The water's pushing it up. And then in here, it's going to suddenly just blast up where it hits this rock. Let's put the dark on first. And then I'm going to put this bright turquoise that I made going. White water blasting up right here. Just a light touch with the big brush here. Let's, let's scramble this up a bit. Just a real light touch, rotating the brush, dabbing it, moving it around like a massage for the canvas and then I'm going to put some of that purple right in between the white and the turquoise that's where I put it I'm going to make more of this wave so I've got wave coming this way the waves hitting that rock going up I'm imagining another wave coming this way intersecting it so this is the intersection right at the edge of that rock look at the direction of the strokes they're curving this way because the wave's going this way. There we go. Now we've got, now we've got the rest of the story. This is the tail end of that wave going the other way. The two waves intersected and kaboom, we had that big splash in the middle. You can have waves on waves on waves, you know. There we go. Now I'm liking the flow of that wave. So we can see the foam really well, how the, how the bubbles rise, they push the foam apart, and what's left in between those areas is little strands. Oh, that was a good one. Oh man. So you know, I always have to think about what is forming what I'm looking at. What is the process that forms it? Because my paint technique is usually built off of that, that understanding of formation. How can I simulate that same process with my paint to form the things that I want on my picture? So this foam, you know, the, the bubbles come from underneath, they push it apart, and it's the skinny strands left in between connecting little, you know, little clumps of foam, skinny strands, so we can see that real clearly happening here so I can try to you know use that knowledge to make believable shapes again with my foam here a wave has already hit and gone out to sea where I have painted the foam on top of the water in other pictures this one I'm going to paint the water in between the foam because that's less work when I know that I've got a lot more foam than water I'll paint the part that's going to get me to my result the fastest. So I just want to create the kind of shapes that might be result from the water coming up and pushing the foam apart. Let's get some bright white now, highlight some spots. I want this dark underwater color at the base of this wave, like this. Let's get rid of that little drip. I want it to tumble out. You know, according to my sketch, when you see me doing this, I'm not destroying a brush. I'm, I'm holding it at that distance right there. So we get a wider tip on that brush and get perhaps a more a wider fan shape to do some more distributed white water. Put the shape. I'm really paying attention to these curves, making them go through so that my Perspective makes sense here. I'm just going to get my colors in place first. I want to make sure these colors are where I want them. Now I'm going to put the light purple, that reflection color, right in here. Oh, yeah, I'm liking the look of that. That's cool. Let's 
put some more white in there. Boop! Just little spots. Oh yeah, man, I'm loving the look of this. You can see the curl on these waves, a beautiful example. When we're looking down at these waves, you see this, this beautiful reflection. So when a wave curls, you know, there's a tube-shaped bubble under it because it's curling around the air, right? So there's air under the water. And that's a tube-shaped bubble. And watch when this wave, I can see one out there, it comes. When this comes in, you're gonna see that curl come over and the reflection is happening under that top layer of water. Watch this, watch this, that curl. Right there, see that white line? Right across that wave when it came in. That, that's an effect that I just love. You know, I always try to get that. Watch the white line that happens below the top of the wave. Just right there. So I'll do a lot of that if I want an upward vantage point. If I want to be looking kind of downward at my scene, which I do, because then I can do more waves behind each other. I'll make sure that I get that, get that look in there. I'm thinking there's a there's a wave right up here. Like that. A wave right here behind this one. We're gonna put a real big splash. It's just shooting up off of this. You gotta dig deep and find the careless person inside and just, you know, just be crazy with some with some big uh, splashy shapes and just Go right over that background. So let's start putting our rock colors in here. There's a lot of light bouncing off that white water, illuminating that so it gets up out of this. I've got areas that are more gray, more black, more white, more brown. Oh, that's pretty fun, huh? Cool. I think that looks great and it was an accident. I feel like my accidents look better than what I do on purpose. <laughs> just some little indication of, of some life in this tide pool. You, you know, maybe just a bit of, of a texture on the edge of some rocks. So we get lots of contrast here in very close proximity. You know, all of these little tiny shapes, it goes from dark to light to dark to light. That feels like something we're familiar with. You go to the beach, you see this dense texture of little, little doodads sticking off the rock. So let me rinse out my brush and we'll just spin that out, get a little bit of water on my hands, you know, it makes it stick to the brush handle so I can just really get a good, oh, that's too much water. They got all slimy. There we go. Spin that brush out. I like the foam that I did in here much better than what I did on my first attempt. So I'm gonna try to just transfer this technique up to these areas and redo them. So we're gonna go white, we're gonna go purple, and we're gonna put some water. You know, I feel like rocks are the easy part of this painting for me. That's my, that's my comfort zone. It's just, we're just putting in some black, some maroon, and some white. We're swirling it together, trying to put the white on the more colorful spots. That's the workflow. I'm also going to try to make waves upon waves. You know, if, if something is turbulent enough, I, I'm going to try to exaggerate this scene. You know, I'm thinking, what if the waves are coming in more rapidly, maybe they're crisscrossing. I'm gonna try to make it even more exaggerated than this, this uh, here, but this is such a beautiful example to me of just the, the crashing, turbulent nature of a deeper, rockier shoreline. You know, when you have a wave on top of a wave, it just happens because they're close enough together. You have a big one and you have little ones. You know, waves don't disappear. They just are kind of the, the sum of the amount of water that's in that area. And it just, you know, it's just moving across the water. So when you have 
a wave combines with another wave, it's always just the sum of the combinations. So you'll have a bigger wave where two cross each other. If you have them going the same direction, you can have a little wave on top of a big wave because they don't go away. They continue to travel. You know, I think I'm at a place in my painting where I feel really confident about the building blocks that I found, but now I'm thinking, how can I do a better job of just creatively mixing those things up? I'm ready to do something more chaotic and just, you know, turbulent looking. Waves on top of waves. Now let's put white water tumbling over these. I could keep going and going on that. I would love to, but I also really want to move on to the big splashes, so let's do that. We're going to use what we observed out there with our stretchy, stretchy splash texture. So really, this is not a difficult thing to achieve at all. Watch this. A glob of white paint, soft touch makes a stretchy strand, more pressure, attaches it to another glob. That's a water splash. Okay, let's do more of those. Glob, stretch, glob. Glob, stretch, glob, stretch, glob. But you always want to have it ending on a glob. It needs to have the glob at the end. And that all is because of the water wanting to stay in a bead, evenly distributed surface tension, but getting stretched apart into multiple beads. And so we're seeing that happen with the splash. Here's an effect you can do. Oh. <laughs> it blasts right back at me. That's the problem with that one, is it blasts right back at me. You can also do this, you know, if you have a bigger brush. Water the paint down, like that. And you can get lots of mist on your picture this way. Water wants to stay together. You know, just a good general rule to remember about water. It wants to stay together. There we go, now we got a big, exciting splash. We'll put a pair of little birdies up here. We'll put a little head for the birdie right here. Let's get more black. And we're going to have the body going down with a little tail for our birdie. Taper this out and get a real little beak like this. Make little feathers like this. Little tail kind of steering this little birdie. Now let's put another one. Let's put another little birdie back there. Here we go, cool, our little birdies running away from the big caboose. Or maybe they're running toward it. Maybe they know that whenever that happens, a few little fishies get splashed up on the shore or something. I'm gonna put a last little bit on this canvas. Wherever I have got a little edge of a rock, you know, facing, the, facing that sunset light. Let's put a little here. I'm gonna put some little rivers in here. Little streams coming down. Maybe there's like a little pool in here little stream that comes down like this. I forgot the rays. Water first so that it really, really slides around good. I'm even gonna take a towel, make sure I've got the surface very thoroughly, thoroughly moistened here. We'll get a little bit of that yellow and we're gonna go right in here. Let's get some of that with some white. Here and let's just start with this, really smear this out, get some water. Oh, I love that. That's the spot right there.